killer. I am in a foul mood. My depressive state has just really kicked me in the gears for the like, past two days. I have like a week before I start my new job, so I have a week of doing existing before I go to Melbourne. Well, a little bit less than a week. I go to Melbourne on this Friday and it is currently Saturday. So <laughs> it is five o'clock and I have done fuck all. I've literally just here. I bought a bath bomb kit and I shoved it in my closet and forgot about it. Um, I've had it here for a week now. We are going to be making that. I have all the little bits and bobs. It comes with two really small molds and I'm. this is me testing out whether or not I want to make bath bombs for fun. Um, and I thought it'd be fitting considering I just finished a mermaid book and I've had like six baths the past few days. No. I <laughs> don't. Okay. Don't. I don't want to make myself feel bad about this. So don't make me feel bad about this either. But I bought this because I was excited to read it. Um, I read the first book and I did enjoy it. But now, now that I'm looking at it, now that I've started reading it, I kind of don't care anymore. It's not what I usually gravitate towards. So maybe I've kind of grown out of the theme. I just, I don't, I'm not having a huge connection with it. I obviously am not giving up just yet because I've only read like three chapters, which is not enough to make a set opinion. Maybe I'm just not in the mood to read it right now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to DNF it, so I'm not going to DNF it just yet. I might even like put it aside and get back to it later on in the year. But I feel so bad because there's a whole fucking video and me wanting to read mermaid books was because I wanted to read this book and get it off my shelf. Um, well, she's not even a mermaid. She's an Elko. So... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so one of the books that I did actually finish um, that is just a quick short audio book. Um, I listened to it while I was like chilling in bed because at that point I didn't want to think. I didn't want to use my brain so I just chilled. I listened to, it's the like short novella that goes before Into the Drowning Deep. This one's like before or beyond. Um, no, it's Rolling in the Deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is the short novella that goes before In the Drowning Deep. If you've read Into the Drowning Deep, even if you haven't, the whole premise of the story is that a previous ship has been sunk and they're going out to discover what, how, what actually happened and if it was actually the mermaids that murdered them. Um, and this one is, this like novella is following the original ship that does get sunk and everyone dies. And I... This type of book is the reason that I want to read more mermaid books. Like, I want to read about sirens and mermaids and fish people, just, like, murdering people. Like, I think that's so interesting. Um, I say that. Um, but, you know, like, Creature of the Black Lagoon isn't so much about murdering people, but it's still classified as, like, a horror movie. Um, I don't know, man. Like, that's just, just my favourite stuff. I want more creature horror where, like, I genuinely feel terrified to ever encounter these beings. But also, it, like, strikes my, strikes my interest, you know? To protest the elections of May 10th, the Jeju chapter of the South Korean Labor Party attacks police stations and other areas under jurisdiction of the U.S. military government. 30 military police officers are killed, many of them former Japanese collaborators. The U.S. military government deploys more troops to Jeju while also purging the Jeju constabulary of any officers sympathetic to the South Korean Labor Party. <coughs> I'm back. Um, I am actually now getting better. I don't have a sore throat. My nose isn't blocked. I just have like this residual cough left. But um, I got significantly sicker after I filmed that clip. And I've been sick for like a week now. So yeah, I got sick sick. And now I can finally finish talking to you about the books and stuff that I've been reading. Um, I continued to read a few books um, this past few week that were like mermaid themed, but not too seriously. Um, 
so the last clip would have been me talking about the mermaid from Jeju. I've actually finished that quite a while ago now, so I don't <coughs> I don't clearly remember everything. Um and I don't really want to say too much because I feel like that definitely like ruins the story if you know like a bunch of the context. It it follows war and I didn't really register how like closely we would be um, experiencing things from this young girl's perspective. Um, so I think it was a good read. I do recommend it to uh, people who are sort of mentally capable of handling war stories. Um, although it's not like, you know, super, super in the war. I think it's enough that you just need to be aware of, you know, where your mental health state is at because I sometimes need to be in the right mindset to be able to pick up those type of books and I didn't really allow myself the time to really fully mentally prepare. So, <coughs> I enjoyed it. Um, I always feel weird about rating books in general, so, um, like this one isn't like a high rating, it's um, more of like a high three, uh, four, almost. Um, which is just, you know, my average rating for books because I don't really like giving books five stars unless I've reread them or like they've blown me away and they've been my absolute favourite. Stop. Back books. Pretty easy to look dumb. Guess this is the stuff. look. Except I got a bunch of stuff too. That's why I usually big look. Maybe mm, not being on the desk. It's smudged. Well, Eliza insults her like a lot. But... Eliza enters the room with dust man and brush. Well, then well, can tell when you're wearing glasses. Tell when you're wearing glasses. Power steering, just plain power. I'm not really used to these later. Okay, I finished two audiobooks and I did have. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick. I've still got my residual cough. So, uh, yeah, I finished two audiobooks. I have intention of reading an ebook and a physical book, but, you know, we love mental illness, man. I just can't bring myself to focus in this at the moment. So, I just started another audiobook. Uh, this one isn't mermaids, but it does deal with mer people, people who live underwater, you know, fish people. Uh, <laughs> and this one is just Shape of Water. Like, I'm just reading the physical book after watching the movie, like, multiple times. It's one of my favourite movies, so I feel like the book is just, like, you know, I'm on, like, that hype of reading books that are based on movies. And I think so far in this audiobook... It's definitely developed and added a lot more to the story than, say, The Mummy. Um, that, uh, oh, I was going to say retextualization, but that's not what it is. It's just, like, a, a written version of the screenplay and, like, the actual movie. And that one was, like, exactly the same, nothing changed. Whereas this one, I think, developed a little bit more into characters that you don't, uh, you're not directly following in the movie so we added a lot more context to different decisions that other people make and like the inner dialogue and inner thoughts of people who are taking particular actions and I think it's just it's I I I'm maybe speaking too soon but considering the movie is like one of my favorites I think the book will also be one of my favorites and it makes me really want to reread Crimson Peak and see if I enjoy it as much or if not the exact same as I did when I first read it so that's fun <laughs> uh, I'm going to what am I going to do now I don't know I want to watch a movie but I also keep telling myself you should read you should read you should read anyway I just thought I'd come on here and like quickly tell you the things that I did read while I was sick uh two audiobooks two and a half audiobooks now not a lot Honestly, reading was like the last fucking thing I wanted to do when I'm like coughing and sneezing and <laughs> I am gonna make you this. Um, I just finished, uh, not just, I finished it last night before I could not fall asleep. So I fell asleep at about 3 a.m. last night uh, because I was, you know, fixating and uh. But um, yeah, I finished the audiobook for Shape of Water. Um, and I fucking loved it. Um, this is what I mean, what I wanted out of The Mummies, a, like, movie, s story written based on a movie. 
Uh, this one was kind of written at the same time and it wasn't like a carbon copy, it wasn't the exact same. The two creators spoke about it and they put their brains together so, you know, director and also writer sort of had like inspiration from, he had inspiration from the movie but he also had his own creative leeway. There were scenes in there that wasn't fully fleshed out. like. Things were different and I loved that because I could see why visually things were changed in order to keep the same sort of colour scheme and keep the same sort of theming. So for example the shoe colour at the end of the movie, um, Eliza is wearing red shoes in the movie and in the book she is seen sw swapping shoes, changing shoes throughout the entire book. Like sometimes she's wearing purple shoes, sometimes she's wearing um, blue shoes and that's like her character trait, she loves wearing pretty shoes um, and at the end instead of red shoes she's just like wearing silver, you know, fancy silver shoes but like it's not one pair of shoes, it's like always changing and I like the fact that in the book, uh, in the movie they have it as one pair, it's like the specific pair that she's been saving up for and that like mean a lot to her. Um, it just kind of has like a more it shows that she loves shoes without having her, it be something so minuscule as her changing them all the time. Um, you know, it's more like it just got a little bit more impactfulness. Creative things. I think both stories stand on their own individually, like well, and they also work well together. I feel like there were scenes that were added that just added so much more gravity to their relationship and their emotions and their feelings, and it was just so. Fucking beautiful. Um, you bet your ass I'm rating this five stars. In fact, I might even say that I prefer the book over the movie. I think both, like, it's one of those things where, like, they both are so good individually, so I just can't, I don't know, it made me feel so good. I already want to reread it. I want to live in this fishman world for eternity. <laughs> I have not watched the movie in a hot minute, though, so I think that's something that I need to do.